Hi, you've clicked onto the Tropical Tidbit for Saturday, September 17th, 2016. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office. Well, we continue to watch two storms in the Atlantic Tropical Depression, Juliet, Tropical Storm Carl, and uh, these both look very similar, sheared, weak tropical systems at this time, but especially Carl here may have to be watched in the longer range as something that may intensify eventually. Uh, but we'll start off talking about Julia here first. If we take a look closer in, we see that this continues to just kind of sit here as it's done for several days now in an area of weak steering currents really has just meandered off of the southeast U.S. coast and is not going anywhere quickly and it continues to be heavily sheared. We have this west-northwest wind that continues to push all this convection off to the eastern side of the circulation. You can see some of these pop-up showers on the north side. They form, they get sheared instantly, and then evaporate as soon as they form. Uh, that has been the story for Julia. But the circulation remains uh, very persistent here. You can see it uh, continues to be closed and just rotates away here. And uh, the models uh, forecast eventual dissipation due to the shear uh, over the next few days as this moves around. It may take a move to the north and then it will have a fork in the road where it will either move northeast or loop back toward the southwest along the coast, depending on the exact evolution of a trough that tries to pick it up here. But the models agree that whichever way it goes, uh, it is uh, expected to dissipate. And that very well may be what happens, but it's always worth keeping a wary eye on a circulation like this. Uh, this is, after all, mid-September. The water is very warm here, and there's a couple things that you have to watch for. One is that uh, when the shear initially comes through, you see that it, it removes most of the moisture from the system, which is why it looks so dry and void here. Um, but what happens with time is if it's allowed to sit, as it has done here, we've seen over the last 24 hours that some of these uh, little convective bursts on the eastern side in bands here, uh, they remain weak and they get sheared as soon as they form, but they have begun to attempt forming with greater frequency. And what that indicates is that the boundary layer is getting a little bit more moist again on the eastern side of the system. And again, it doesn't take much for that to happen with a uh, a nice circulation here over warm water, it picks up moisture off the ocean, and so it begins to re-moisten its environment around the circulation. And what this means is that if the shear was to ever let up for a little bit and become lighter, we might suddenly see convection form again around this circulation. And at that point, it would have to be watched again for some kind of re-intensification or reformation. And uh, right now, the models don't really forecast that to happen, uh, but there may still be one window left where the shear lowers. Uh, this is the GFS analysis, upper level wind, uh, showing again that west-northwest flow. These uh, light blues here are actually 20, 30, or 40 knot winds out of the west-northwest, again showing that big time shear coming over it. If we go out to Sunday morning, we see that the shear has shifted out of the north, but we see this ridge axis beginning to bubble in over the southeast U.S. And so by the time we get to Sunday night, uh, Julia actually moves underneath this ridge axis. And so now this is an area of lighter shear and uh, this may be one window uh, during which uh, it may have a chance to regenerate some convection. And this may be a short-lived window, but uh, it's enough to uh, make this worth watching considering how close to the coast it is. We may still see some showers and gusty winds make it back to the coast of the Carolinas here sometime early next week. So we'll have to keep an eye on X Julia. Considering how persistent it has been, models will struggle to forecast uh, meandering vortex like this correctly. So if the shear ever lightens, just keep a wary eye on this. But right now, chances don't favor it strengthening anytime soon. Uh, we'll just keep, uh, keep a wary eye on it. All right, so back to the Atlantic, and uh, that was Julia. We'll now turn our attention to Tropical Storm Carl off in the eastern Atlantic. It looks pretty similar to Julia, doesn't it, with uh, shear out of the west continuing to push most of the convection off to its eastern side. If we zoom in on it a little zoom in a little bit more here, you'll see the center of circulation very exposed. Again, the shear pushing the convection off to the east side. And we notice a couple of things. Uh, one is that the system is less circular and symmetric uh, like it was the last time we looked at it. It's a little bit more elliptic in shape here. I've exaggerated it a little bit, but you can kind of see the ovular nature to the circulation. You can see this extension to the south, almost like a trough extending from the surface low. And uh, this is one of those signs in the tropical Atlantic, uh, along with the shear that's obviously here. That's another one of the signs, but uh, the elliptic shape is another sign 
uh, that something's not going to intensify very much imminently uh, in the near future. Uh, this really needs to be more symmetric. The elliptic shape kind of prevents the consolidation of thunderstorm activity and heating over the center of circulation, which is what is necessary for intensification. And obviously the shear is preventing that as well. But even if the shear lessens, it may take a little bit more time for a circulation of this shape to organize. And that may be why models have dropped off a bit recently on the intensity forecast for Carl. Originally, a lot of models had this intensifying very healthily by the time it gets into this part of the Atlantic, but the models have since backed off, and that may be partially due to the asymmetry that we're now seeing in the circulation, which will be reinforced, perhaps, by the interaction with some mid-level features uh, that we see on some of the model forecasts. I'll show you some of those now. This is the GFS analysis uh, at 700 millibars, which is in the mid-levels of the atmosphere. This is where Carl is here, but you can see that the center is embedded within this larger envelope. This is again an ovular shaped circulation in general, and so you can see the center is in the northern part, and there's this extension to the south. Now, uh, first of all, during the next couple of days, the track will take a little bit of a dip toward the south, because if you have Carl here, uh, this extension, this trough to the south, will tend to rotate it around toward the southwest, along with this ridge to its northwest will also reinforce a bit of a southwest motion, and so this may lose a little bit of latitude. But then what happens is that this, this oval will end up rotating sort of around itself so that by the time we go out to Sunday and Sunday evening, you see that the, the ellipse has rotated around to a more southeast to northwest tilt in here. And uh, Carl has moved a little bit farther south, but now we have a little bit of a trough in front of it and to the north. And this has the function of eroding the ridge to the north of Carl. And this allows more of a west-northwest motion instead of a west motion. So again, as we move out in time, this trough remains in front of Carl back here, eroding the ridge in front. And so this allows a track that avoids the Leeward Islands and moves again toward the north. And you see that the circulation is also remaining weak on the GFS. Now, part of the reason this may be is, one, this trough to the north may keep the asymmetry going, and it may keep this more elliptically shaped and kind of mess with the circulation. But the other thing may be shear, uh, which we can kind of see on water vapor imagery here. This is the trough that is currently shearing Carl out of the west in here. And as soon as this trough leaves Carl alone, it may run into this trough immediately to its west. So it may uh, leave one trough and then immediately start interacting with another. Uh, the one, the other option is that it may find a sweet spot in between, but this is a small area of light shear. And right now, the upper level pattern in general over this region is not very ideal. And again, we have the dry air to the west of Carl as well. So all of this kind of indicates that Carl will not be intensifying very much in the short term. But as this upper level trough uh, backs off to the west and weakens with time, it may be that by the time Carl gets north of the Leeward Islands, uh, it may have a little bit more of an upper level ridge over it, and some of the models se seem to indicate that, which could allow some more conducive conditions for strengthening. But for now, uh, the models really don't indicate any vigor to Carl as it moves west. So we'll have to keep an eye on the situation. The models seem to be picking up on a trend that the environment will not be as conducive as originally thought. Uh, but it won't take much at this time of year for a system like Carl to eventually strengthen. Uh, but we likely won't be seeing a hurricane anytime soon during the next few days, given the conditions it's under right now. Now, as far as the track goes, we've kind of talked about how uh, it will kind of get pinwheeled around its own elliptic shape and kind of move southwest over the next couple of days, reinforced by this ridge, and then turn back to the west-northwest with time. That is now in very good agreement from the model suite in general. You can see a close clustering of a, a west-southwest track in the short term, turning west-northwest right away, and now moving much farther north of the Lesser Antilles. Uh, previously, it was more it was looking like there may be a threat to the leewards, uh, but right now that threat is much, much lessened given the close agreement that we see here that Carl will pass well to the north. And so this is not anymore looking like a problem for the Caribbean islands, uh, but the track will get more ambiguous as we get out into the longer range here. Uh, Bermuda up in here somewhere may eventually uh, get close to Carl, or rather Carl will get close to it in the longer range, and part of the problem is uh, the pattern will be very complicated in the upper levels at the steering layer. Uh, this is the GFS out to Thursday afternoon next week 
at 500 millibars, this is where Carl would be on the model. And what we see is that the system is kind of stuck in an area of rather weak steering currents. There's a little bit of a ridge north of it, but it isn't much of a ridge. There's this trough to the north eroding that ridge. There's a new ridge coming over the eastern United States, but there's also a cutoff low. Uh, which is kind of throwing a monkey wrench in the pattern. And if I back up a few steps, you'll see where that came from. There was a short wave over the Ohio Valley that comes in over the next couple of days. And then if I loop forward again, you'll see the southern end of that trough break off and kind of meander around and interact with uh, Julia, actually, during that time. But as this ridge builds over the top, this cutoff low makes the pattern just even more complicated than it already is around Carl. And so it's very difficult for the models to predict this with any kind of accuracy. And so with these weak steering currents, uh, it's very hard to tell where Carl will go. Now, most models agree that with trough after trough, coming uh, in a very progressive pattern, which means they move very quickly from west to east into the western Atlantic. Usually a storm like Carl will end up recurving uh, due to one of these troughs eroding the ridge. Normally it finds a way to move out to sea, but Bermuda is right here and uh, it may be that uh, they have to watch this system uh, for exactly where that turn occurs. And right now this pattern is very complicated and not something the models are going to deal with very well. Uh, and forecast accurately. So again, normally this is true with a five day, six day, seven day forecast. We don't really know anything. Uh, so we're going to have to keep an eye on Carl for the next while. And uh, we'll still have to see uh, how strong it is by the time it gets here. A stronger storm will tend to move north quicker. If it's still very weak in here, we still may see it try to slip farther west, and that's still on the table. Uh, it may slip more toward the Bahamas if it's very weak and far enough south in the longer range, but very difficult to say. Right now, most signs point to it turning out eventually, perhaps somewhere near Bermuda in the longer term. So we'll keep a close eye on that as Carl continues to move toward the west. Again, signs point towards struggling to intensify over the next few days. It may have better conditions later on in its life, but the track and intensity both uncertain in the longer range. Right now, not an imminent threat to land, except potentially in the very long range, so no imminent threats. And we'll continue to watch Julia as, again, dissipation is mostly expected, but keep a wary eye on it as it will be near the coast and may have a window of lower shear early next week. So we'll keep an eye on both of these systems, and uh, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.